remember that through jungle, the matchup could be influenced. Weiwei versus Tien is another good element to highlight as V5 start off on blue side, FPX on red. And now 10-16, as Lyric mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, Yone will be banned throughout playoffs, I have to say, just to keep in the back of your mind. So it is not available. The new champion sits on the bench. But Lilia still enabled as we run into these bans. And Twisted Fate, Galio, all targeted towards Doom. Exactly. We're seeing that V5 realize, hey, these are two champions that can get Doom B through that laning phase and allow them to have that big pressure all around the map. For FPX, so they're banning out the junglers from Weiwei and taking out their favorite AD carry and Ash to guarantee them that bot lane prior. First pick. Oh, they've done this so many times. Most played top laner in the LPL right now, and a lot of teams are looking at it quite seriously as the first pick. Yep, we saw it in the last weeks, and there it is locked in for Bubi, so it's going to guarantee him a strong matchup into pretty much everything that Gimgoon plays. So, again, Gimgoon plays a lot of Mordekaiser, plays a lot of Volley Bear, which also hit took a bit of a nerf. So, FPX taking top right now is interesting. They're not going to end up showing anything. What I want to see is where do they go with the AD carry position with our two prevalent AD carries banned out? When you think that Ash is such a big pick for V5, and there you go, Lilia, first rotation on red side. Tien has been spamming this in solo queue, and has already played it a couple times in the LPL. And it's a champion that pro players are very divided on. Some I've heard think it's extremely OP, and others I've talked to think it's absolutely terrible. Point is, it has a great early clear, has great movement speed around the map, provides a lot of damage you know, in those early skirmishes. And there we go, we get the Kalista FPX are saying, hey, we want these early skirmishes. Yeah. We also want to guarantee bot lane prio because we know Kalista is so strong in the early laning phase. And a really nice takeaway from Sam D when he entered the league, Kalista was his favorite. So V5 thinking about something a little bit more passive that has been rising back to form. And I, I'm Seven. really surprised with this one because this is why we saw them bring Y4 back into the roster because yep. Sam D wasn't much of a Senna player, but they do lock it in. They signal they're going to play more around their soul laners. And hey, when you yep. locked in Renekton first pick and now you get Mo on his famous Zoe, look at that smile. These guys are ready to play around their soul yes, laners. Yes, they are. So Mo with a bit of comfort now. FPX have been given the support to pair, though. And Crisp, as you said, he's played 17 games of this. Make it number 18. This is what he does every time, guys. He's going to blind pick this Nautilus. He, he loves it. The, the comfort of this champion. They have a very strong all-in in the bot lane. And once again, we know FPX love playing around that bot lane matchup. Well, jungle bans seem to be the next priority as we move into the second phase. We've already got one here for FPX, and the Olaf is a start against Weiwei. That's going to make jungle ban number three. Do they continue down this route? Yeah, I assume you just keep banning out Weiwei again with the Volley Bear nerfs, the set nerfs. Mm. It's kind of interesting that we're seeing FPX just completely outright ignore those champions. We haven't seen Weiwei diversify that much out of a lot of those top picks. He has a couple of games on Lee Sin. He has a couple of games on Trundle, which ha we haven't seen in recent weeks. But I'd love to see V5 just keep banning out mid laners, take doing B off matchups he's comfortable, but instead they say, hey, we're not going to give the goon the GP. No, one of his favorite picks. He's got a world skin for for a reason as well. It's, it also plays really heavily around bot side, which Very is, again, true. exactly what FPX's comp is signaling. We'll just wait and see. No one get too excited. you got to show one solo laner here, and the Volley Bear, they don't care. They're going to lock it in anyway. Yep, and it's been one of uh, Gimgoon's go-tos. FPX has been one of the teams that have preferred to put it in a solo lane rather than have it in jungle. And yep. that doesn't say a lot to me about Tien. It says more that... Gimgoon wants a champion that has a very steady laning phase, can provide a bit of frontline, and is also very safe with his ultimate. Now you're talking about Weiwei's jungle with Graves gone, things like the Trundle still available, opts into the set instead. We're building a bit of a frontline here for V5 if this gets locked into. Yep, and I, I would expect it, right? It is one of our go-to answers to the Nautilus because Nautilus hits a dredge, dredge line and it is too tanky with the W stats mm -hmm. coming out that Leona can't go down. So V5 are playing a very early game, focused game, they really want these early skirmishes. They want to fight for early dragons. They want a lot of attention towards the top half of the map. Are we building up a bit of mid game here, though, for FPX? Solo liner for Doombi. Now, when I think of Doombi, I don't always think of LeBlanc. He has played 16 unique champions. This was the one I was about <laughs> to say. Karma God. has been his most played champion this split. It has had a bit of nerfs to her Q damage, so I have heard that a lot of pros are kind of straying away from it, but Duinbi is one of our players who just loves this champion. It facilitates what Tien wants to do in the jungle, and you also have a very strong team fight coming out. All right, well, Duinbi with the karma, with the comfort. You talk about the team fighting. I'll be looking for it. V5, you mentioned skirmishing as well. I expect more aggression coming out from V5 this okay. game. We have, again, we have our Necton who really wants attention early on. We have mixed damage in the mid jungle, so we could see Weiwei looking for some mid ganks early. Mole setting up with those sleepy trouble bubbles to where 
FPX are going to play a, a bit of a slower game, in my opinion, at least very early on, right? We're going to see Lilia go for those full clears because she has an amazing clear speed. We're going to see Duinby just answer waves, and they're going to set up for these big plays around the bottom side of the map. Big plays on the bottom side. All right, that, that makes sense. You talked about FPX being willing to touch up on V5's bottom lane. The strength of how they play League of Legends right now revolves around bot. If FPX can shut it out, play more towards their own play style, which we saw in 2019, there's a big chance that they could edge a net in this first game. Yeah, it's going to be nice to see because we're going to need to see LWX and Crisp set up massively because they are bringing the engage to this team composition. So I wouldn't be surprised if we just see LWX, I'm not sorry, we see TN full clear his jungle, make his way down yeah. bot, and we try to hit a dredge line onto Sam Dean PB got it and set up some action pretty early. It's a great way to start off this game. Great way to start off the series. Great way to start off playoffs with V5 in the fifth seed here over the world champions. The old versus the new. A better way to kick off the LPL playoffs. I dare you to find one as we run on in to our first match. FBX are the world champions. They do technically get more dialogue, Lyric. But V5 are the new rising stars. They almost found themselves in quarterfinals. But here they are in round one. They need this series win if they want to make the dream reality and go towards the world. While FBX with championship points are already guaranteed, but still want to rise their way up and make the run. Top side of the bracket and playoffs begin here as our English audience are not believers, apparently. No, I guess they're edging out to the experience that FPX have, which I can't really blame them. Again, this team just won Worlds not very long ago. V5 are coming in with no playoff experience. The only member with playoff experience on this team is Weiwei. Yeah. At least they get best of threes, but it, nothing compares to a best of five, while FPX, Lyric, I think we're getting an invade. They do have a strong level one. Karma, one of our strongest level one champions in the game, but God, V5 are here and ready. Ward spots down. Weiwei thinks about it, but still doesn't care. Going to start this one off. And we get a bit of a pause. Weiwei did stay stable for quite a long time, so we'll see what that one is. But you kick it off playoffs, you're going to get a pause. And even this invade actually makes a lot of sense, right? We said, hey, FPX want to set up for their bot side very early on. Yeah. You can cut the map, make sure that Weiwei's playing around the top side. Then you're going to have a lot of pressure to maybe even potentially set up four early dives when you have something like a Nautilus coming out. I was going to say, though, for V5, the, would the trade-off be okay? Because you're talking about the solo lane as a V5 with the Renekton, with the Zoe, and the ability for Weiwei to get in in the laning phase. I'd say the trade-off isn't worth it because oh, okay. I definitely feel like with the... with Callista and Nautilus, you can get that rolling much earlier than True. a Renekton into a Volley Bear. Gimgoon's going to have a fine time. Even if Gimgoon does go down, you know, once in lane, it's not going to be the end of the world. He is just expected to be this tank that's going to soak up damage later on. And I will say, when we're talking about Chris versus PP God, it's going to be a fun matchup to watch at the very least. And I think also, putting a bit of onus back into LWX when he's going up against a rookie AD carry in Sam D. Also a bit of an exciting matchup. It really is. And Sam D and PP God have looked extremely dominant in laning phase. It yeah. does come down partially to all the resources they get. But we saw many times them just getting 2v2 kills outright in lane. They got it in their very first match of the split against DMO and True. have done it consistently. Even against JDG, I remember 2v2 killing Loken and Lumao and both of them having standout splits as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting back into Summoner's Rift. Not sure what the pause was, but now that we are back, we see the logo. Playoffs begin to get it all. No, an LPL way to start. Apparently, red buff being taken down, smited, stolen by Tien. Level two now on the Lilia, and forward, Samdi gets pulled in, has to flash away. The Ignite's down. First blood almost secured. Tien has flash, and he spins to win. First blood to FPX for the playoffs. And that was so massive coming out from FPX. And on V5 side, they were divided. Mo was trying to make his way around, couldn't get in. Clutch might coming out from Tien, and then realizing, hey, we have a 4v3 on, on the bottom half of this fight. Let's just keep going. And no more summoners on Sam D. He used both PP God, has no flash. He'll remain in lane to get a bit of experience, but this is not a good start. I also want to highlight that LWX and Chris were just kind of slowly building up their wave. We saw him going for those last hits. Yeah. So that can show us they're going to build up a big wave and try to set up this dive. And now that Tien has red, he's going straight towards his blue. The map cut, whether Weiwei likes it or not. Yeah, great play coming out from FPX. And even talking about their draft a bit more, 
since Lilia is a champion who really does want to look for these, these the counter jungling, she's very fast clear speed, you really want to guarantee Pryo in the mid lane, and there's no champion like Karma at doing that, is going to lose out in Pryo on this first wave because of Doombi joining in on the fight. Mm -hmm. But off the bounce back, Doombi should be able to control this lane the entire time. We'll watch for Mole here, who's getting aggressive, trying to push him back a little bit for now. A top side was not involved in the play while I have to pause because LWX and Chris just getting a bit of deep vision. While V5, their wave shoved very hard against this turret, and most of it will be picked up by Sam D. And unlucky for Doomy Mole picking up a redemption, so hmm. not feeling uh, confident in walking up to the wave right now. And so. right now, we're just going to get Weiwei picking up the topside Scuttle Crab with the pressure that Mole's generated, as well as Bibu and topside. I like that a level 3 Zoe can pick up an item that costs like 2100 gold. As Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the story here is that FBX are the world champions. Not only that, they've made playoffs many different times. The smite secures that. Bubi goes for a bit of an invade himself. Weiwei's heading up on a ward right now, and this five-time playoff team may be challenged through this jungle. Bubi walks back to lane. Yep, looks like Tian will be fine again. Lilia's clear speed is so fast. Your Q is on a, a four-second cooldown, so very easy to spam that True. ability. And we see LWX and Chris picking up the scuttle on the opposite side of and the map. And Redline, because PP God doesn't have flash, has the exhaust, doesn't burn it just yet, but half health with the Ren. Dominant laning phase already for FPX, and we've only just begun. Yeah, great job. They play off the level three that they did get before V5 spot lane. And, you know, we were talking to Clement yesterday. He coined it perfectly, in my opinion. If a team is willing to invest as many resources into bot as V5, V5 are mortal. Yeah. Losing out through bottom lane, a very severe threat, and already in this game we can see it with that first blood going over, this time to Lilia, but the bottom side already pushing ahead with the CS lead. And ladies and gentlemen, don't forget for V5, their first playoffs ever as an organization. So it's going to be hard going up against FPX as Tien back on this side of the map. But look at the minimap. LWX and Crisp are nearby. Doonby even has push right now, so they're able to follow up. That steals the flash in for the face break, and the trouble bubble connects as well. Everybody's in onto Tien. What a collapse here. But now they have to survive from the Kalista as Sam D comes on in. The damage way too much as LWX gets poked down. Flashes away but dies in the end. It's now two versus two, but Chris is separated with a double kill going over to Mole. He's got double buffs as well. And double the fun means triple could only be better as Doombi flashes away. And V5, just when you thought they were out, they pull you back in. Exactly, they read the play so well. PP God was already making his way over. Mole hitting a very clutch, sleepy trouble bubble. Comes out two for two in the end, but Mole getting these double buffs is going to feel so nice in this mid lane matchup. Just being able to spam abilities and guarantee this Pryo four way way to play around. And has a 10 CS lead to build up as well. Curious about that first back. He's already got a Dark Seal. So that's going to give him a lot of extra stats here in this early game. And we saw how FPX wanted to play this, right? Because they do have the stronger bot lane, but we're coming back up to topside. Bubu forcing the flash out of Gimgun flashes oh, in. Oh, no, and... that's why it was a two for two. Okay, well, uh, that's pretty disappointing, <laughs> or, especially or three for two. when we praise Bubu coming in. We thought he was just kind of a better Gimgun in this matchup, but hey. We're not slowing down. Wei Wei wants to do a bit of counter jungling on his own. Yubi now running away from this matchup. As Fury of the North up here from Gimgun. Really smacking him down with that sheen now in the inventory. And let's remember that Gimgun took Presti attack much better in the shorter tray, just being able to get that one, two, three off compared to Bubu, who needs to stack up that conquer before getting a lot of that damage that he wants. And the healing especially doesn't come in until you True. get all 12 stacks. I want to pause for a second, because while we have that 1,200 gold lead, I was noticed Weiwei is trying to position towards top. Tien now on his own side of the jungle, kind of shadowing and ready to do the same. And we talked a lot about how V5 in this early game wanted to play around these solo lanes, how they were built up. Now that Mole has a couple of kills, do you see Weiwei positioning more towards mid, trying to snowball that further? Yes, especially knowing V5, they're a team that likes to contest every Drake, so... I wouldn't be surprised if we do just see Weiwei and Mole link up, try to set up vision for this dragon, as okay. we see now. And I don't think they'll just outright start it, because FPX's bot lane is the one that's going to consistently have push. But if FPX try to go for a Drake, I do assume that V5 are going to try to try to counterplay. Trying to counterplay. Okay, that's what I like to see. We've already got six kills in seven minutes. Is Tian going to be spotted out on a ward? And this might actually start up the dragon after it's down. 
and again, FPX have every right to do this. They're going to have the pushing bot lane. We know Kalista is much stronger in these early game fights than the Senna, so they could potentially just burst out V5 members before all four of V5 can even get to the Dragon. Through the bottom lane, perhaps. Tien now here. Trench line connects onto Sam D. I don't know how he gets saved as LWX goes forward. The Fates Call available as well. They survive. And the Lullaby goes onto PP God. So that's ulti down for Tien and not much gain. No, nope, they are going to force Samdi back. He doesn't have flash, so this could set up for the Drake they were just talking about. Blue is up, so it does look like Ken is going to go potentially hand that one off to Doombi. Don't you mention the flash? Flash would point out here from Samdi. Losing Lullaby not available, but Tian going to hand off the blue buff. And we're going to see this one started with the double smite that Callista offers. Yep, and again, with that bot lane play, now V5 aren't in a position to contest. And at this point, I think we're just waiting for Sam B to hit that level 6 to get the Dawning Shadows. And that's really when this bottom lane comes online to start making plays around top side. And Sam B doesn't have to join in because he just has the global. That's true. Moments away from hitting that as Mole deep for top side. Meanwhile, with the Rift Herald now sitting there. Weiwei also going up towards his blue to give away the handover. And then we'll see if this one gets started up. Yep, and we still have Yubiu pushing in that matchup. He did buy two, two Dorans, so going for that laning straight, also sitting on two long swords in general. So just going to be able to consistently spam his Q and push out these waves if they want to guarantee this Herald. And we actually see both bot lanes heading over right now. Yeah. Pings are getting spammed down. So get ready for another one. We're building up towards this 5 on 5. Let's note, though, that Tien's ultimate still isn't up, so not going to be able to get that yeah. massive five man sleep if a fight starts right away. And Crisp is only level 5. So is PP God, though, so okay. at least they're coming in on even footing. We need to see how much work Mole can do here because this is where Zoe thrives, being able to fight over this drain, hit those max range sleepy trouble bubbles. And this is where Mole has looked like a god in the past. Yep. FBX is going to be the one to start this one up. Mole does have blue buff on that topic as well, with an Ignite in hand. And as Tien starts this one up, Weiwei's on the way in. Blast going taken by the triple. The troll bubble lands onto Doombi. The back line absorbed by the shield. All five around the objective first, but V5 are not saying no to this one. Rend at the ready with Spears in. Bubu has not joined. Will this get a reset or smite away? Tien gets sleeped down and stolen. Weiwei will get the Herald and the first pick off as well. That gets traded in the end as the ult comes through. The bear jumps on in as Bubu now joins the fight. Sam D is hit hard and PP God has to disengage. V5 will lose more, but it's at the cost of the Herald. Exactly, one for two overall, but massive flop coming in from FPX. You not only have a smite, you have a Kalista. These are the scenarios where you are pretty much guaranteed to win out, so overall feels great for V5 getting it onto Mole. And speaking of Mole, he's found Chris. Bit of damage oh. there is. Wow, I thought that Warden's Wrath would do something. He fucked this over! Oh my lord, Mole 3 and 0. And I'm saying it right now, Mole is the third best mid laner in LPL. Up there with players you like Knight and Rookie. Hey, you look pretty good right now, sir. But hey, so it's, phen Mole. it's phenomenal to get to watch this guy play League of Legends. And now that B5 had this Herald, this is where we typically see PB got more unlocked from his lane, yep. trying to make those roams look for those picks, whether it is just in mid onto Duinbi, or looking for a pick onto Tien in his own jungle and then set up for a massive Herald play in the mid lane. He's got those tier 2 boots and notice that the Merc shreds against his team feels pretty good if you're someone like PP God as well. But we will keep track of Mole and where the build goes for now. Watch this replay. Oh, because he used <laughs> Dredge Line. I mean, it's understandable, <laughs> right? Yeah, look, he gets a car. He saw the character model there. He thought he could, he could pick something up, but just set up for Mole to get this kill in. Again, now this is the win condition for V5. We set yep. up, hey, they want to play around soul lanes. You have a 3-0-1 Zoe. This is their time to shine. But also remember that for FPX, while they did flub part of the last fight, we're almost towards the Blade of the Ruin King Callista this early on, and Gimgoon almost has Trinity Force. So a lot of things to watch out for FPX here. Even Tien, right, is sitting on his completed jungle item Runic, compared yep. to Weiwei. So his clear is going to be massive. And we're already seeing FPX make these early plays around bot lane. And honestly, this is one of the best games from FPX we've seen. It's just consistently being able to find this pressure, roam around the map, True. and it all comes from that level one play they made on the red buff. It's been tremoring throughout the game ever since for B5 in this bottom lane. Right now, still 10 CS behind of what LWX and Chris Barb. Wave pushing in is going to be about 15 and more. Also, something interesting to know is we see Beauty going for the Blade of the Rune King build, which oh, yeah. we don't see many LPL top laners go for. They prefer just getting the more HP and, you know, cooldown coming out from Black Cleaver and trying to be a massive threat force in these team fights. But he is signaling more. He wants more of that, that 1v1, more of that side lane matchup. 
which as we've highlighted, when you have the Dawning Shadows, makes a lot of sense. I think it makes Renekton scaling much better, and you're still going to be able to come in with that Black Cleaver second. Well, against Gim June, getting a bit of that lifesteal as well after what has been the bullying matchup. Feels pretty nice as he's pushing in. He wants a bit of turret plating. Nice little sky splitter. Wow, Gim June is a huge machine. And this is why they keep giving him this volley bear rather than Tien, right? Because he looks so proficient on the champion again. Does great in the short trades, but we see Mole making his way up. He's Bubi got a herald. Bubi also had TP if he wanted to finish recall, but he's just going to stick around. How far out is Gim June? Well, he's up in the brush. So Mole thinking. In way pushing. Mole in. Good timing here for the mid laner. Onto Gimgoon. Trouble Bubble doesn't connect though. And now he's got a Herald that's gonna time out pretty soon, Lyric. So he's gonna make a decision here or quickly run back mid. It, I assume he's just gonna drop it here. It looks like. Oh, I was actually expecting Beauty just to walk mid lane, but it does look like Sam D and PB got a little catch that wave. And they're actually going in for an early lane swap. Yeah. Wait, wait, he's not here. He's heading up towards the top side. He's committing to this top lane tower. And to me, that signals that they're just trying to dodge out on, on both matchups. You know, both their side lanes were doing pretty badly. We saw Gimun coming out ahead. We saw LWX and Crisp also picking up early kills. So giving up this dragon to get a bit of play gold into Mole and Weiwei's pockets. It'd be great considering that Weiwei is now on towards his second item here as one of the front lines of V5. This is also an interesting adaptation because we've seen V5 make this play before, but typically they'll do it with sending Sam D on the side of oh, the, yeah. the rift to get the turret plating, but realizing, hey, he's on the center, he's on this more supportive element. Let's keep funneling gold into Mole. As the flash comes through, meanwhile, Kim Goon was walking towards the top side, has to ulti out of there. PP God goes in with the solar flare. Not enough damage, though. Little Thing Lullaby might be the tilting one for PP God as he goes on gold and absorbs the damage once again. The center ulti comes through. Kim Goon doesn't understand how to kill this man. And that was close from both sides. Exactly, that was really shaky. I, uh, I understand the thought process from V5 looking for that pick, but this is also why LPL players still love this Volley Bear because it just does provide so much versatility with that ultimate being able to go in aggressively, or as we saw there, being able to get out of sticky yep. situations. Still nice by V5 to be able to get away, not lose out too much. Gold is back to even, FPX are up two drinks. Remember why gold's at even? Mole got the inner turret top as well. Gim Goon was trying to walk up there and persuade him to leave a little bit early. But Mole stuck around. He got some more solo gold. Level 11 here on the Zoe. And once this goes down, yeah, Luden's Echo with an Oblivion Orb yeah, at 14 minutes. He's going to be hitting like a truck, and it's going to be interesting to see because these two team comps want to take fights very differently. Obviously, FPX just wants to all in right away. They have the Clissa, they have the Nautilus. Just go, go, go to where V5 do want to want to get a bit of setup. They do want to whittle down the enemy more with the Paddle Stars coming out from Mole. Yeah. And then looking for Weiwei, PP God, and Beauty to get in on the enemy carries. If someone gets caught out and they don't have Doombi nearby, the damage is going to be so immense on this roster. Also interesting that we see Beauty just went for a Kindle Gem, so wanting a uh. bit of tankiness, wanting that early CDR. There's Mole called out. Doombi won't get the lockdown here with the Tether from the Inspire. I'm trying to think. Focus result. That's the one. As Mole is a thousand gold ahead of LWX, who was fed very early in this game and is sitting with Blade of the King. So, V5 have already committed five man to topside if you look at your minimap. Bubi was already hovering around mid lane. Though Gimgun does have TP, it doesn't look like FPX have really any good flank ward set up. So, looks like they're just potentially going to give this one away to Victory 5. Pulling it out for the time being. The second Herald of the game given over. That's two for V5. And this is also another distinct characteristic about V5 is that. They do just try to five-man stack one side of the map to mm. guarantee pressure for these objectives. And it's it's how they get ahead, but it's also how we've seen them be punished in the past, like against EDG, where yeah. they had that Camille and V5 just ignored their side lanes for so long. But we're going back to standard lane allocation with Mole on the wing towards the mid lane. And if they can get LWX, it's a big chunk of gold that can be shredded on over to V5. Same with Mole, though. So key members that pretty much can't die. LWX dodging away from the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, but mid will still be defended. Yep, and they're trying to set up for this Herald play. They are going to hover bot side now, so Gim Goon shouldn't really be able to push out any more aggressively than this. But Gim Goon should be able to make his way over here first. Redline connects, not really into the wall. Goes Golden again, trying to come in as well. V5 have spread on out as the ultimate from Weiwei, not secured with the face call for the safety maneuver. Chris gets sent on in as the volley is there, but the face breaker was massive as 
Yubi returns on the flank. The Solar Flare in. LWX out. Gimgoon is the one-man army, but the Trouble Bubble. Mole is the hero of this game one. And like you said, massive Haymaker coming out from Weiwei. Mole doing so well. They still have the Herald. They're going to make that play now. And this is what we've seen time and time again with Victory 5. They thrive in these early bot side skirmishes, and they're able to push it forward so well. Get that pick, then put the Herald down, roll with the tempo. V5 now with that tempo play, have a 2k goal, please. And it looks so dicey for them starting out, right? Yep. We saw that Gimgun was making his way over first. It was a 5v4. PP God was not in a good position. He was getting collapsed on, but... V5 were able to make it work, really clutch ultimate coming out from Sam D as well, and we're going to get a replay here. We see V5 try to go in, but realizing quickly, hey, we need to get out of here. Weiwei in a really bad position, almost goes down. Massive Haymaker, massive Holy. Senna ultimate to set all of this up. Yu Yu keeps going forward with the Dominus. Bull still throwing out all that damage. If you see here, Sleepy Trouble Bubble on the Gimgu just to clean up this fight, and Huge AoE coming out from the side of V5 with both the set and the Renekton. Massive paddle starting to do and be yeah. right there. And this is why we've said so many times, you cannot leave Mole Zoe open. This is one of the most fan, it is the most fan champion against Victory 5 actually, at 51% of the time. And Mole's showing us why. He's now 4-0, he's got a Majai's because all big mid laners buy Majai's in the LPL. If you, if you are a top mid laner in LPL, you buy Majai's every game. And now for V5 with that gold lead in hand, Start with the first Cloud Dragon. They have the option of four for that 40% CDR on the ulti, so that'll be good for things like the Zen of the set, the Renekton, as FBX want to challenge. Stretch line in, we're going to fight once more. Sandy poked on the outside, but they have a, a lot of sustain as the Fate Breaker again comes on in. Weiwei is set up for success. Chris going in was probably the biggest mistake of his game one. And V5 do it again. Yep, V5 just going forward even better. And Gimgu not able to get in on the fight. He was being zoned out by players like Sam, D, and Mole. Weiwei being able to get in the skirmish. PB got countering the engage coming out from Crisp and picking up more kills. And now we've got Sam D with a bounty after FPX are trying to group up to bottom. Bit of a momentum shift here as Bubu with his ulti that's not available. Will he go down the slice and dice eventually? Takes him out. And this goes back to what we were saying before the game, that FPX look for a lot of these cheeky plays to either get back in a game or win games. So nice job by them to abuse the mistake coming out from Bubu. Yeah. But still, 2k gold lead for the side of V5 and... The thing to pay attention with this fight, right, is on the bottom side of our mini-map. Gimdu can't get in the fight, so they just re-engage. They commit five-man to this fight, and Weiwei and, and Bubu right now are just so massive. Mole wasn't even really a big contributing factor in that fight. Sure. You can imagine the difference if FBX was still sticking around, but got to pay attention to those timers because we're at 20 minutes in the game. That gold lead existent, but Baron now up and available. And FPX got a cheeky pick, but Bubu is back alive once again. And now, I would say we wait, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you're right. With, with Victory 5, it's always confusing because they do still like to continuously look for these yeah. proactive plays around the map. It does look like they're going to send their bot lane due to catch this wave in mid, so FPX have the, the push to get vision in the river. So maybe going to try and set up a pick into v 5 jungle. Spotted out, Troll Bubble taken by Chris. Mole wants to be cheeky here with the Paddle Star over the wall. Range, not enough as he walks up for this wave himself. And Mole is just such a menace. He can fend off three people as long as he doesn't get caught. He's fine. That was blind, by the way. Yep, but now it's going to be V5's turn to get back River Control on top side. Their bot lane just pushed out the wave, so going to go to clear out a lot of this vision that FPX picked up. And a great thing is FPX were five-man stacked top, so Bubu -Bu getting a lot of alone time with this turret, going to keep pushing the gold lead further. And it's so nice to see that V5 were, were cognizant. They fell behind early. They gave up that early Drake to trade gold on the opposite side of the map. Yep. And that's what really kept them in this game and now propelled them into the lead. And that's why, despite experience, we're talking about V5 being a good team in the LPL this split outside of things like the memes, outside of the hype and momentum. When they got their first win and they start getting better and better from their spring performance with this new roster, so... V5 already showing up in the best of five here. And if a fight breaks out right now, I still feel like V5's comp is favored. Even okay. just looking across the board at items, right? PB God already having the Gargoyle Stone Plate compared to Chris, so going to be much tankier in those skirmishes. Senna right now at a pretty good point, having picked up that Black Cleaver. We've already hit on Mole's items many, many times. Mole is hitting like a truck right now. 
and it just doesn't feel like FPX have the damage to answer. And this also is one of the struggles of Lilia when behind is she is a very squishy champion. You don't really have any hard CC. It's very hard to get your passive on many members and land that sleep. So Tien's going to struggle to find an impact. And you're really going to be relying on LWX to somehow kite out this front line, which when you have so much engage on the side of Victory 5, hard. exactly, it, it doesn't sound easy. Cleanse off a cooldown, it feels like as well. And we'll see if that third item becomes a Mercurial, Mercurial, how do you say that word? Mercurial Scimitar? You're going to say it way better than I can yeah. say it, my friend. Mercurial is just the, the hardest part. Uh, he's already got a uh, Vampire Acceptor in his inventory. A lot of time we've seen that be a Death Dance as a third item. But pay attention to what our timer is in the top left hand corner of the screen. The next cloud is coming up. FPX heading towards Sol. The same vein for V5. They want that extra 10%. And that's really what both of these comps are playing for, right? They're playing for these 5v5s around neutral objectives. So we're going to continuously come back to those dragon timers. And I don't expect this game to really break open either way until we get some massive fight of dragon. Maybe you kill three to five members, and then a team's going to be able to turn to Baron. Dug away there from the small seed of Tien. Dragging up in 50 seconds. FPX waiting and baiting. FPX hitting some nice item breakpoints themselves, though, with the Leandris coming out for Tien, so that's going to do a ton of damage, especially with how much consistent damage Lilia has into NB. Oh, Weiwei is forcing the engage on the backside. Though. They've found Tien. Vivi is coming in as well. The Stanner ulti flies through Mole with the Soul Flare alongside. Pippi got in the back line. LDX trying to cut this out. He's exhausted, though. Mole jumps in, forces him back. That's two man lifting Lullaby, but it doesn't matter because Vivi says, forward I go. Mole's still alive. FPX so damn low across the board, and Weiwei sets this up, but it's Mole again! Who finishes the damn fight? And this is exactly where Victory 5 thrive. We see Biu Biu flash forward. You already said Weiwei Wei set it up, but Mole once again dealing the consistent DPS. Now they're just going to go for an inhibitor. The death time is large, but not large enough to end. V5 grouped up. Mole's going to back away with 24 stacks on the Magi's. He TPs in. The inhibitor to be broken and his damage is absurd. 36.5% of his team's damage. This man is showing up so big right now, sitting on one needlessly large rod. Looks like he's going for an early Rabadons. And then people like LWX are going to be in front of our eyes and he's going to be gone. Yes. He's going to be one shot. Oh, we saw in that fight, half health in an instant. It has to back away and can no longer stick around. FPX are what? not giving up though. Do Inby's, do Inby's TPing in. All right, two people here. The rest of FPX are far away. V5, are they going to give this one up? We need to remember, V5 have not reset yet, so they are still yeah. sitting on all their gold. But they're grouped on up. 12 level lands onto LWX. Mole has the flash as well. Doesn't get through, thanks to Chris, but still at half health. Dread time for the re-engage onto Weiwei. The Haymaker, though, with the shield. And the face breaker before he dies. Gets them low. Bubu starts going in. He's a motorcycle with a crocodile on top as PP God follows through. And Mole is still alive. This Zoe is having the anime redemption story. And this is exactly the match we wanted, but actually this game is about to be over because Pew Pew's TPing in. In 25 minutes, we said B5 like to take it fast. And even in playoffs, in a best of five, they're going to kick this game off. We've got 15 seconds and 10 on Chris. Minion holding up. The rest of B5 walking in. Lyric, I think this is going to a game two very quickly. Yeah, exactly. Great performance coming out from Maul stomping the current world champions. Open Nexus and V5 showing that experience doesn't matter to kick off this best of five. And again, just the perfect recipe for success drafting this comp that does well in these early dragon fights like we talked about because you know FPX are going to look for the fight every single time. And we just need to keep talking about Mole. Star performance coming out for Mole in playoffs, a place we have not seen Mole perform. Don't, uh, don't give him Zoe. Don't give him Zoe. Don't give him Zoe. Mole Zoe. Whew. There's something different. But most most band champion against V5 for a reason. Already, V5 kick it off with a bang. And I like what you said in that game where, you know, they were losing in gold for a portion of that game. FPX found that pick at level one. And it thought it was all downhill. But then through mid, Mole gets it two kills. LWX get two kills. They put gold in through Herald. They ignore the dragon. Decision making for V5 in the first 10 minutes of the game. T first 10, 15 minutes of what gave them this win. Well, this is why so many of us honestly think that V5 is going to be one of the teams going to Worlds because mm -hmm. their shot calling is just so on point. They know when to make the trades. True. They know the set plays to progress the game forward. 
it was great to see that they're losing on both sides of the map, right? Yep. Their top lane's losing, their bot side's losing. They realize, hey, okay, we're gonna we're gonna change our map state. We're gonna get even in gold. Mole's gonna be set back up. Sam D's, you said, got a bounty pretty early on, got back into the game. Yep. And just no answers coming out from FPX. They weren't able to find the fights they wanted, especially Tien falling behind early, making it so this Lilia was quite useless. And it didn't matter that LWX got an advantage early. He wasn't able to use it. You're right. If he stepped forward in the fight, he's dead because he's dead. of Mole. You know, bigger impact here from the mid laner. And in the mid lane matchup, we got, I guess, what a lot of fans would expect that Doombi would be on something like this Karma, you know, push and have an impact through the ability to shield the early two items. The biggest part for me was that Mole's ability to carry in the regular season and now hasn't changed. There's no nerves that you'd expect with a team running into playoffs for the first time. None of E5 will get their nerves. They, no. they still just progress regular forward, they still apparently. walk forward, they're still extremely aggressive, but. There are a few question marks with FPX's draft. Like when you have a Karma, it is typically meant to facilitate either a carry jungler or a carry, you know, an AD carry that scales, which Kalista's not that, and Lilia yeah. also an AP champion. Sure, it's nice because it gives push, so it allows for Lilia to look for these aggressive counter jungling plays, which we saw him go for, but that's when V5 counter punched early on. That's when Mole came in with the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, and they got what was going to be an even trade until, you know, Bubu also and, went down on top and side. And that's when you look at the value of the set versus the Lilia, right? Where Weiwei's set was the person who set up the fights in, you know, the 15, 20 minute mark and around these neutral objectives. Weiwei had another good game. It wasn't about him hard carrying, but he still carried on this uh, Bruiser jungle. And it shows, even with some nerfs coming through for the set on his W knee damage, the scaling being brought down, yep. doesn't matter because V5... V5 aren't ever going to get you to the point in the game where that's relevant. It's all about the early game for Victory 5. And I love LPL gold graphs, but even more importantly, that damage coming out from Maul, just nice was to see. It's absolutely insane. Gimgoon coming in as a close second there as well. For FPX, I'm curious as to what happens now, because a lot of the time we've seen as a response, what happens when teams lose? They go straight to interchanging their players. Exactly. Me and you were actually having this conversation earlier that we I don't think FPX should bring in Khan right away. I think it could be... Even worse if, let's say, you bring in Khan and then lose, and now you have no mental reset compared to, okay, you try Gimgun again, you change up the draft a bit because it was wonky, and then if you go down again, right, you have a very good mental reset coming yeah. into game three. We're talking about it with V5 as well, but here for V5, a successful game number one to open up round one of the series against the world champions. Game two, right after the break.